Let's look at the quiz for book number four. And I'm going to do as I have been doing, just read the statement, and I'll pause a second before I get to the answer. And here's what I've got here. Number one, the Bible is a collection of 66 books. Number two, the Old Testament has 39 books, and the New Testament has 27. Number three, list two verses that confirm the Bible is inspired by God. I've got 2 Timothy 3.16 and 2 Peter 1.21. Number four, true or false, God wrote the Bible and used human instruments to record his words. That is true. List a verse that proves your answer, 2 Timothy 3.16. Number five, doctrine means what is right. Reproof shows what is not right. Correction shows me how to get it right. And instruction in righteousness helps me stay right. Number six, list three reasons we should read the Bible. I don't know if there are more given, but these are the three that I wrote down from the, from the book. It increases my faith. It is spiritual food, and it gives me examples to live by. Then, list four reasons we can trust God's word. Include a verse for each, and I've got written down. It's inspi- four reasons we can trust God's word. It's inspired by God, 2 Timothy 3.16. It's pure, Proverbs 30, verse 5. God promises to preserve his word to all generations, Psalm 12, 6 and 7, and prophecies have been fulfilled throughout history, Acts 3, 18. So that's what I have. You may have something slightly different, but um, that is the quiz for book number four, the Word of God. So tonight we move to level two, level two, book one, and this is on prayer. So open up. Now, this one has a lot of verses to turn to. So I'm going to move quickly, and we are going to actually look at the verses that it says to, to uh, turn to. Um, so, But I haven't marked any passages. So in other words, if you can turn as fast as I turn, I'll read as soon as I get there, and we'll make, we'll make good progress here. In order to develop a healthy relationship with God, I must have meaningful communication with Him. Prayer is communication with God. A believer's spiritual strength is dependent upon his prayer life. So, first question, what is prayer? Prayer is access to God. Ephesians 2.18 says, For through him, meaning Jesus, we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Now turn to Hebrews chapter 4. And we will read Hebrews 4.16. Hebrews 4.16. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Prayer is access to God. It is amazing that a holy God welcomes sinful man to communicate directly with him. God shows me how much he loves me by listening to me. And by the way, the more you talk to him, the more you gain the confidence that he hears you. Prayer is access to God. Secondly, prayer is obedience to God. You can turn to Luke chapter 18. Prayer is obedience to God. 1 Thessalonians 5.17 says pray without ceasing. Now, of course, we, we know, obviously, that doesn't mean that you're to stay on your knees all day long in prayer. But you ought to be communicating with God all the time. You should never, and I should never, put God on hold and say, all right, Lord, I can't pray right now because... Uh, you know, I'm going to do this thing that does, I'm going to be listening some, to some music and the language is pretty foul. So I'll put you on hold. I'll come. No, I should be able to pray to the Lord all times. So obviously, there's things that you do 
that occupy your mind, your eyes, your ears. You know, you're at work, you're at school. But you can always be in a spirit of prayer where the communication with God is open. Prayer is access to God. Prayer is obedience to God. Pray without ceasing. Luke 18, 1. And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Not, not to faint meaning not to get weary, not to give up. That's talking about in the individual prayers, but it's also talking in pursuing a particular request. Don't give up. Don't faint. Don't quit in uh, going after the Lord in that request. An attitude of prayer, turn to Proverbs 3 while I'm reading this, an attitude of prayer should develop into a lifestyle. I should include God in all my daily decisions. I have met people who did do this, but I've never met anyone who does this more diligently than Dr. Tom Williams. And I've had the privilege of spending time with him, uh, just, just hundreds of hours of time with him over the years. And I'm telling you, he does not go to the next thing without praying first. Every time you get in the car, if you're talking, you get in the car and, uh, and he's in the passenger seat and you're talking, he'll interrupt you, take his cowboy hat off and say, Lord, please keep us safe as we travel. Everything, every next thing he goes to, he begins with prayer. Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. You can't do those things without being in a spirit of prayer. So uh, the prayer should become a lifestyle. Prayer is access to God. Prayer is obedience to God. Number three, prayer is asking God for help. And let me take a time out in case you're saying, well, man, I mean, this is so basic. Yes, yeah, that's, that's the point of this, is to revisit the basics and then to help somebody else visit the basics. And so going through this is not only educational and inspirational for us, but it's also motivational for us to say, all right, Lord, give me somebody to show the basics to. Give me somebody that I can lead to you and then walk them through these basics. Prayer is asking God for help. Turn to Psalm 46 where uh, providentially I've been for, for the last few days, Psalm 46, but we'll get there in a second. Matthew 7, 7, ask and it shall be given you. Seek and you shall find. Prayer, excuse me, is asking God for help. Psalm 46, verse 1. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. That doesn't mean that he's going to bully his way around your life. It means he's right there if you'll just ask him. And so God's help is dependent upon your prayer walk with him. Turn to Psalm 60 and verse number 11. Give us help from trouble, for vain is the help of man. Do you believe, you know the story of how Peter was walking on the water and uh, Jesus was walking on the water and Peter said, bid me to come to you and Jesus said, come ahead. Peter started to walk and then of course he got his eyes on the waves and off of Jesus, he started to sink. And he said, help Lord. Do you believe that no matter what your crisis, you can call out to him and say, Lord, help me. And he'll be there. He will. He's a very present help in trouble. You call out to him and he will, he will help you. So prayer is asking God for help. Man will never seek God until he recognizes his need for help. We need help. The next big question there, will God hear my prayer? Yes, God does hear your prayer. Let's look at some statements in the Bible to say that. You turn to Psalm 5. While I read to you Job 22, Job 22, verse 27, thou shalt make thy prayer unto him and he shall hear thee. God's telling us he hears our prayers. Psalm 5, verse number 3, and there's a um, Maranatha song to, to these verses that I 
Is I think that's the, this is right. Uh, yeah, let's let's start at verse number one in this. I, I just love this passage. Verses 1 through 3, give ear to my words, O Lord, consider my meditation. Hearken unto the voice of my cry, my King and my God, for unto thee will I pray. My voice shalt thou hear in the morning. O Lord, in the morning will I direct my prayer unto thee and will look up. I love that. Look at Psalm 65, and I know we're crisscrossing through some of the uh, same chapters here, but it's worth it for us to see these promises in God's word Psalm 65 and verse number two. O thou that hearest prayer unto thee shall all flesh come now wait a minute let me remind you that, that this is a song of David Psalm 5 was a psalm of David and and David said my voice shalt thou hear in the morning and this verse said O thou that hearest prayer you say, well, but wait a second, that's not God saying, I will hear your prayer. And I want to remind you that taking these promises when they are spoken in the second person like this, second person meaning the writer speaking to God, is just as much a promise as if God said in the first person, I am the one that hears prayer. That's the nature, the fact that the Word of God is, is given, inspired, as we talked about last Wednesday, and preserved, means that when God moved David to write these things about him, that's God telling us that these things are true about himself. So, David calls God, O thou that hearest prayer. And in Psalm 5, he says, My voice shalt thou hear in the morning. God hears when we pray. Are you willing to take him at his word? You know this one, but turn there anyway. Jeremiah 33 and verse number 3. And if you're reading it or if you're quoting it, why don't you say it with me? Jeremiah 33, 3. Ready? Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. God's word tells us that he hears the prayers of men. Now, how should I pray? For this one, we're going to be looking at the same passage uh, for the next page and a half here. So turn to Matthew chapter 6, which is the first time that uh, Jesus is teaching the model prayer to the disciples. And... Um, it's commonly called the Lord's Prayer, and I'm okay with that as long as you remember Jesus didn't pray this prayer because he said, forgive us our debts or forgive us our sins, and uh, Jesus never had to confess his sins. It's the Lord's Prayer in the sense that it's the prayer that the Lord gave to us. And so let's walk through it here. The uh, top of page number two. I'm sorry. We're not there yet. I'm looking at the wrong side of the page. How should I pray? The disciples asked Jesus to teach them to pray. And Jesus then gave us the following model for prayer, okay? So the disciples asking Jesus, Lord, teach us to pray, pray that's found in Luke 18. And there, Jesus gives this same model. But here uh, is, the, is the most commonly worded, uh, or I'm sorry, the common, most commonly known wording of the Lord's Prayer. So we're going to look at this one. Number one, pray to God not to impress people, Matthew 6, 5 and 6. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward, meaning they pray to be seen, so that's all they get. They're seen. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. And when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy father which is in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. So don't pray to impress people. Pray to God. Even when you pray in a, in a prayer meeting or you're called upon to pray in church, force yourself to be aware that you're talking to God. Force yourself to be aware that you're talking to God. Listen. 
I've seen some of the most foolish things done in prayer. I, I, I had a man, literally, it was me and him, and he's not in this room, he's not in our church anymore, but it was me and him in prayer, and he's rebuking me to God in prayer. Literally telling God that the way I pray is dumb. That was his word. It's dumb the way this other guy prays. Um, he wasn't saying that because he felt the Lord needed to hear it. He was saying that because he wanted me to hear it. I didn't rebuke him. I didn't say anything to him about it at all. But, man, don't think that God's hearing and blessing your prayer if you're using prayer as a tool for anything else but to communicate with him. Talk to God and check your heart to be sure you're talking to God. Do not pray by repeating empty words like reading a prayer card or chanting a prayer. Look at verses uh, 7 and 8. But when you pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your Father knoweth what things ye have need of before ye ask them. So don't, I don't think there's anything wrong with reading a written prayer to the Lord. But you better make sure that that prayer is coming from your heart. Isn't it crazy that he said, don't use vain repetitions, and then he gives us a model prayer. What do we do? We turn it into a vain, let's say the Our Father. And just because you've memorized a prayer and can quote it doesn't mean you're talking to the Lord. Again, I'm not, I, I like it that, that people in general know the words of what we call the Lord's Prayer. I'm not rebuking that. But don't let yourself just repeat words. He said, use not vain repetitions. Number three, come to God with a respectful attitude. Matthew 6, 9. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Number four, desire God's will in your life. Want what God wants. Matthew 6, 10. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Number five, ask for daily needs. Matthew 6, 11, give us this day our daily bread. Number six, acknowledge your sins and forgive those who have sinned against you. And forgive us our debts and as we forgive our debtors, verse 12. Number seven, pray for spiritual protection and help. Matthew 6, 13, and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Number eight, accept that God is in control and that he deserves all glory. Verse 13 again, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hey, if you're just starting out in prayer, first of all, the, the, the Lord's Prayer, the model prayer, is one of the greatest, I, mean, I guess, the greatest outline you could follow for worship, and then asking, and, and submission, and confession, and then thanking God, it, you couldn't follow a better outline. But if you were just starting out, and you say, I don't even know what words to pray, it, it'd be a marvelous thing to pray the Lord's Prayer, thinking about what you're saying as you pray the words, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And thinking your way through that prayer as you say it to the Lord, just don't let it become vain repetition, which is what Jesus warned against. Some other prayers in the Bible, and there are many, but there is the prayer of Jabez in 1 Chronicles 4.10. And then there are prayers of Paul, one's found in Ephesians 3.14, and others found in Colossians one. And these are good things to help us. There are many prayers of Jesus and uh, many prayers of Old Testament saints asking God to work. Why does it seem that some prayers don't get answered? Is it possible for a Christian to hinder his own prayers? It sure is. And so let's look at some ways that we hinder our own praying. Number one, by not asking. James 4.2 you have not because you ask not. Number two, by asking selfishly. J. 
James 4, 3. You ask and receive not because you ask amiss that you might consume it upon your lusts. Another way we hinder our prayers, number three, by not having a proper relationship with your spouse. Whoa, whoa, where would that come from? 1 Peter 3, 7. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with your wives according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. Wow. You know, it's, it's sad how many husbands and wives don't think of their relationship as a spiritual thing. But God says if a man's not treating, and it doesn't say it of the wife. I mean, I got a, an idea that it might be true, but it specifically says to the husband that if you're not treating your wife right, your prayers will be hindered. Number four, by not confessing sin, Psalm 66, 18. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Sin blocks our ability to communicate with God. When sin fascinates us more than our relationship with God, he will not hear us. Acknowledging our sin reconnects us with God. It's so important. The word repent means to turn from, to think differently afterward. And it's so important that, you know, if you're battling sin, if you're battling a temper, you're battling a foul mouth, you're battling lying, you're, you're, you're uh, uh, battling lust, whatever you might be battling, it's so important that you bring that to the Lord in thorough, genuine repentance and not just your token, well, I'm going to tell another lie and then I'll confess it afterwards. You know what you're doing there? You are regarding iniquity. There's a sin that is a favorite of yours. Regard, like best regards, you know, I respect you. You're showing respect to a sin, and you're not really turning away from it. You have a sin that you you like. It's, it's a favorite of yours, and you won't truly confess it to the Lord. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. That's another way that we... We um, fail to get our sins answered. We block our own, our, uh, our sins answered, our prayers answered. We block our own prayers. Isaiah 59, verses 1 and 2. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, neither his ear heavy that it cannot hear, but your iniquities have separated between you and your God. So it's not that God can't hear you because he's, 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 he's hard of hearing. It's not that he can't answer you because he can't, his arm can't reach as, long, as far as it used to to give you the answer. No, it's that your iniquities have separated between you and your God. Your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. So you need to genuinely confess and deal with your sins. Let's hit some practical tips on prayer, and I know it's late, so we'll go through these quickly. Number one, keep a list. A list can help you remember someone for whom you want to pray. And some people find it helpful to use pictures of people in need of prayer. Listen, making a list. If God gives you an idea of how to keep a list of prayer requests, follow it. You don't, you know, I've never heard, I, that's an idea, but I've never heard pastor endorse it. Don't worry about pastor endorsing it. If it's a way that helps you remember to pray for, for things, for people, then, then use it. I don't even know what I'm talking about, but okay, I don't have an example for you is what I mean, okay, but maybe you've got, hey, maybe there's a prayer request app, I don't know, I've never investigated, I'm still a real big paper and pen guy, but so man, there's an app, but I don't know if I should use that or not, man, if it, if it helps you remember what to pray for and who to pray for, absolutely, absolutely, so keep a list, number two, schedule a time. You can turn to Matthew 14 where I read for you Psalm 55. Here's another scripture song that, that we don't sing. We should, but Psalm 55, 17. Evening and morning and at noon will I pray and cry aloud, and he shall hear my voice. I tell you what, if you know that one, we'll sing that as we close in just a minute or two. Uh, but Matthew 14, verse number 23. And when he had sent Jesus, of course, when Jesus had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain to, apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. And so, very clearly in the Bible, Jesus uses 
the nighttime, the wee hours of the morning, many times you find Jesus praying it at 1, 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. That word watch, when it says the third watch of the night, those are quarters of the night. And so third watch of the night, that's from midnight to, to uh, 3. Fourth watch of the night, that's from 3 to 6. Rising a great while before day, Jesus had times to pray. To build a healthy habit, choose a time and do your best to keep it. Keep a list, schedule a time. Number three, find a place. You can turn to Genesis 19, and uh, that is where we will end. Genesis 19, while you do, let me read for you. Mark 6, 46. And when he had sent them away, and this is the Mark version of that same verse we just read in Matthew, when he had sent them away, he departed into a mountain to pray. Jesus clearly liked to pray in, in mountains. And uh, that may not be your favorite, which is good because you probably don't have a mountain in your backyard. Maybe you do. But uh, I've always enjoyed praying in, actually, we have a mountain in the backyard of the church here. And I Went up there one time and prayed, and uh, I haven't been able to get up there since. But, but uh, I've always liked to pray walking in the woods. I've really enjoyed that. But find a place or a kind of place. Genesis 19, 27. And Abraham got up early in the morning to the place where he stood before the Lord. So Abraham, the friend of God, the man who believed God, had a place where he met the Lord. It's important to have a quiet place to pray. Choose some places in your life and designate them as prayer places. And you may say, well, you, you don't understand my situation. In my situation, I don't have a place, uh, a quiet place. And I bet if you searched and made some effort in your, in your routine, you could find a place you hadn't thought of where you could meet the Lord. And say, you know, this is, Lord, this is not necessarily my ideal choice for a place to pray, but it is a place where I can be alone and get some quiet to talk to you. Number four, keep a record of answered prayers. Psalm 118, verse 21, I will praise thee, for thou hast heard me. Meaning, I'm going to praise the Lord because I know that he's heard and answered my prayers in days gone by. And this way you can encourage yourself and increase your faith by seeing what God has done through your prayer efforts. This was a little longer tonight, but if we're going to go a little longer on any subject, it ought to be the subject of prayer because prayer is the great lack in the Christian's life and the church's life in 2022. Let's stand together.